The following is a paid presentation brought to you by Amazing Facts Incorporated. Coming up next on Amazing Facts Presents... Daniel could serve them well because he served a higher monarch first. For over 40 years, Amazing Facts has been dedicated to sharing God's Word through media. This program features highlights from some of our best television broadcasts. We invite you to sit back and enjoy this edition of Amazing Facts Presents. Today's presentation is an excerpt from the Everlasting Gospel video series. Uh, and so we're going to talk about a story this morning that is very familiar. Uh, maybe take a fresh look at a story that has been referred to, especially for the children. And it's the story of Daniel in the lion's den. Very quickly to give you the history, Daniel, when he was a young man, had been carried off captive to, to Babylon during the reign of King Nebuchadnezzar. Through a series of miracles, he was exalted from the position of being a captive to being prime minister and chief counselor for Nebuchadnezzar. Now, go with me to the book of Daniel, chapter 6. We're going to read verse 1 with that background. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes or governors to be over the whole kingdom and over these three governors of whom Daniel was chief or first, that the princes might give account to them and so the king would have no loss. Part of delegating such a big kingdom, because not only was it the Babylonian Empire, but now the Babylonians had been absorbed by the Persians, so you've got this very big kingdom to administrate. And so he puts Daniel in among the three governors, because he can be trusted. Well, you know, the other Medo-Persians sort of resent that. Here you take this captor from Judah who had been, he's not even a national, and not only you give him a position of honor, but the king was thinking about setting him over the whole realm. Verse 3. Then this Daniel, while he was working as one of the three top governors, distinguished himself above the governors and the princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. He just exuded the Holy Spirit. There was the aura of God's spirit about him that others recognized. Why did he thrive during the reign of all those monarchs? Because Daniel really never served them first. Daniel could serve them well because he served a higher monarch first. And they recognized that about him. And he thought to set him over the whole realm. He was going to make him prime minister or viceroy of the entire empire. Now that really bothered the other politicians who thought they should be in line. There was envy. They, they were jealous. Now, before I go very far in the study of Daniel chapter 6, I want you to know the whole great controversy is in this story between Christ and Satan. The battle between good and evil. The life of Christ is even modeled in the life of Daniel. Jesus, second only to God Almighty the Father, the idea that Daniel would be second only to the king, they could not stand that. What was it that caused the rebellion of Lucifer? He was jealous. He envied the position of Christ. He wanted to be like the Most High. So a plot was in, in put into effect to get him out of the way. They sought to find some occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find no short charge or fault because he was faithful. What did they say about Jesus? Even Pilate said, I find no fault in him. They sent spies who came back and said, no man speaks like this man. He was faithful. By the way, Daniel was human. You can have the same spirit Daniel had. So stop making excuses. This story is in the Bible to encourage you that uh, you can live a godly life and have integrity. They said, we're not, verse 5, we're not going to find any charge against this Daniel. They can't even say Daniel, this Daniel. Unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God we're going to need to probably get some religious law enacted and use that against him somewhere where his law and principles conflict with the law of the Medo-Persians. So the governors and the princes thronged before the king and they said, King Darius, live forever. All the governors and the, of the kingdom and the administrators and the princes have consulted together 
and the ad advisors have consulted together to establish a royal statute. Well, they're lying. It wasn't all of them. Daniel was chief. He wasn't in there. I can promise you that. They were trying to give the king the impression that they had had consensus and everybody agreed this was a good thing to unite the kingdom. We're consulting that the king establish a royal statute and make a firm decree that whoever petitions or prays to any god or man for 30 days except for you, O king, he'll be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians which does not alter. I underlined in my Bible, cannot be changed, does not alter. And then it goes on to say, therefore King Darius signed the written decree. Now the Medo-Persians when they made a law, it wasn't like in North America where we vote a law and we vote it out. We say here's a good law, no we're changing that law, we're repealing that law, we're modifying that law. Depends on who's in office at the time and whether or not we liked it. When they made a law back then, the law of the king did not change. And it wasn't just his vanity. Nobody prays to anybody but me for 30 days. Darius wasn't, and probably appealed to his vanity. But you see, they knew something back then that leaders know. When you cannot unite diverse people because of politics, or because of language barriers, because there are cultural differences or geography. If you can get people united in religion, they can overcome all the other barriers. The devil knows that. Nebuchadnezzar knew that. Why do you think he said, I'm going to have everybody gather on the plain of Dura. We're going to make a statue. We're all going to bow to the same statue at the same time. Unite the kingdom. We'll be welded together by common faith and worship. Bring the people together. So Darius signs the decree. Good idea. I got 127 provinces. The people are scattered. We got some of Babylonians, some Medes, some Persians, some Jews, and all these different. Weld them together. You all pray to the king for 30 days and develop morale and support. So he signed the decree. But he didn't know that it was really a ruse. The whole thing was to get rid of Daniel. Now, here's where, for me, the story is phenomenal. Daniel is a man of sterling conviction and courage. You read in verse 10, I've got this underlined in my Bible. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, I doubt with his high position that they could get the, the document printed, copied, and circulated without his knowing. Somebody brought him a copy before it went out. When Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home. He withdrew from the corruption of the palace back to his house. And in his upper room, his windows being open, now why would that be mentioned? What does the law say? Anybody caught praying for 30 days. You know, doesn't Jesus say when you pray, enter into your closet and shut the door? Wouldn't this have been a good time to go in the closet and shut the door? Why did he pray? Not only did he pray with his windows open, he prayed on his knees so they could see physically he was in a posture of prayer. He could have just sat there in the window with his arms folded and looked like he was meditating, but he got down and took on the posture of prayer. And he did not pray towards the palace in Babylon or in Shushan. He prayed towards Jerusalem. Everything about what Daniel did said, I am not going to worship man. I am going to worship God because it's better to obey God than man, right? Another reason he left his window open, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, not to glorify you, glorify your Father in heaven. Don't hide what you believe. Daniel was ready to be caught praying at the cost of his life. And there were probably spies set up watching to see, is he going to continue his custom? Is he going to close his windows? Is he going to hide the posture of prayer? Daniel did not change anything about his relationship with God, even though it might cost him his life. Was it because he was stubborn? Is there any virtue in Christians being stubborn? wearing our religion on our sleeve and being obstinate? No, 